Welcome into College Football Breakdown with Joe Lisi. Find him on Twitter at Go for the Two. Joe, welcome in. How are you feeling today, buddy? Uh, looking forward to week number 12, the college football season, the stretch run. This is what it's all about, Drew. Absolutely, Joe. And last week you went 1-3-1, one, and one, leaving yourself 31-17 and 17, and then the one tie. So great season overall in bounce back mode. Let's get right into it, man. 2.30 Eastern, we got Iowa State versus Baylor. Looks like the Cyclones are minus nine pretty much across the board at SBR odds. Minus nine in the hook at Heritage. So if you're looking to bet on Baylor, Heritage is the sports book right now on SBR odds. 54 and a half the total. How you bet betting this big 12 matchup, Joe? Yeah, I like Baylor here. I was on Baylor last week against Texas Tech. They didn't come through. They played very well. They lost that ball game 38 to 24. On the flip side, you have Iowa State that opened up a 14 point lead on Oklahoma State and allowed that lead to slip, dropping that ball game 49 to 42. When you look at the series perspective, over the last four games, Baylor's won four straight by 26 and a half points per game. They picked up this victory last year in Ames 45 to 42 but there's a couple of factors why i like baylor in this matchup first you look at iowa state's quarterback kyle kemp he was injured last week and gave way to freshman zeb nolan his status for this game is uncertain if he does play he's still battling a shoulder injury how healthy will he be heading into this ball game zeb nolan did play well last week completed 17 to 28 passes that was 60 percent 263 yards, no touchdowns, one interception. If he does play in this ballgame, he is a redshirt freshman. So the game experience heading on the road in Waco is a cause of concern if you're an Iowa State fan. When you look at Iowa State offensively, they're only rushing for 110 yards on the ground, passing for 279 yards through the air as an offense. But over the last seven games, this is an offense that's only averaging 94.8 rushing yards per game. Last week, they rushed for 105 yards on the ground against Oklahoma State. And when you look at Iowa State's defense overall heading into this bat battle, that's where I have some concerns as well. They're giving up 136 rushing yards per game, but more importantly, giving up 245 passing yards to opposing offenses on the road or on the neutral field side. It's 284 passing yards per game. They're allowing 43% on third down conversions, and they're going up against a Baylor offense that's averaging 295 passing yards per game. They put up 417 last week against Texas Tech. I think it carries through, and I like the Baylor Bears to win a very close game in Waco, 37-34 to over Iowa State. The bounce back mode, too. Back-to-back -back emotional losses for the Cyclones as they go on the road. I like the Baylor Bears in this ballgame. All right, Joe likes Baylor outright, actually. But for record-keeping purposes, Baylor plus 9.5, best number at Heritage right now. On to the 3.30 slate, Joe. We got Navy at Notre Dame. Looks like 62 is the total, minus 17 and a half, pretty much across the board. If you're looking to bet Navy, you can find an 18 right now at Bet Online. So betting Navy, Bet Online is the place to do it. Joe, how are you betting this matchup? Yeah, I mean, Notre Dame is coming off a disappointing 41 to 8 loss against Miami. Navy did pick up a 43 to 40 win over SMU to become bowl eligible. When you look at the last five meetings, Notre Dame has won for the last five by 17.7 points per game, but the last three games have been decided by 9.3 points per game, and Navy picked up this victory last year in Jacksonville on a neutral field, 28 to 27. But I think this is a bad matchup for the midshipmen. I think Notre Dame will come back home. They'll be angry and take out their frustration on an undersized midshipman defense. You look at Navy overall, they're allowing 165 rushing yards to opposing offenses. Notre Dame still pounding the rock for 303 on the ground. And when you look at Navy in terms of third down defense, they're allowing opposing offenses to convert 43% of the time. They only have 12 total sacks as a defensive unit heading into this ball game. I think Brandon Winbush will put pressure on the Navy defense on the perimeter. That should open up play action 
for Notre Dame, and I think they blow this game wide open. Another cause of concern is Navy is negative seven in turnover margin. Notre Dame enters this game plus eight. This is an untypical Navy type of team. For, they're committing a lot of turnovers, and I look for Notre Dame to exploit Navy's defense, not just on the ground, but through the air. Navy's allowing 245 passing yards per game. I think Notre Dame rolls in a big way, 52-17. to 17. The Fighting Irish dominate this ball game in their last home game in South Bend for the season. All right, Joe, so you're on the Irish plus or minus 17 in the hook in this one. Another 330 slate game, K-State versus Oklahoma State. Looks like Oklahoma State's minus 21. You can't find a 20 and a half right now. 62 the total. This one, um, they're in Stillwater in Oklahoma. So h- how are you looking to bet this Big 12 matchup, Joe? Well, you look at the uh, Oklahoma State's won three of the last five by only four points per game. They won this game in Manhattan last year, 43 to 37. Mason Rudolph led a a one minute drive in the end to pull that game out in Kansas State. But I think this is a bad matchup for the Wildcats. You look at Oklahoma State as an offense, they're rushing for 194 yards on the ground, still passing for 378 through the air. Mason Rudolph is completing 64% of his passes, 3,690 yards, 30 touchdowns, seven interceptions. He's going to be facing a Kansas State secondary that's giving up 303 passing yards to opposing offenses. That's Kansas State's highest passing defense total since prior to the 2008 season. Over the last four games, Kansas State is giving up 401 passing yards per game. They've allowed 11 uh, touchdowns during that span and have only forced five interceptions. And when you look at Kansas State's offense entering this ball game, they're pedestrian. They're running for 192 yards on the ground and only uh, passing for 183 yards through the air. I think Oklahoma State starts fast, puts the pressure on Kansas State to match them score for score. And I really feel that Oklahoma State bounces back in a big way. They open it up 48 to 17 over Kansas State. Kansas State looks going to become bowl eligible but i think this is a bad matchup for the wildcats the cowboys roll in this ball game all right oklahoma state minus 20 in the hook in that one so uh two big favorites there joe and going into the the last 330 game here we got purdue iowa in the big 10 looks like iowa minus seven and a half and some opinion in this one bet online has has iowa at minus nine so uh, a point and a half difference there in between the seven and a half and nine on the sbr odd screen right now 41 the total how are you looking to bet this big 10 matchup joe yeah, I like Purdue here. You look at the series, Iowa's won four straight over the Boilermakers by 18 points per game. Purdue is four and six and played very well on the road against Northwestern, uh, a Northwestern team that seems to be playing better as the season progresses. They lost that ball game by 10 points, but they played very well in run support. You look at Purdue, it is back-to-back row games, but they're fighting to become bowl eligible. They're sitting at four and six overall. This is a Purdue off offense that's still running the football consistently right around 150 yards on the ground passing for 250 uh, right around 245 yards through the air and when you look at their defense overall drew that's where i think purdue can be in this ball game they're allowing 139 rushing yards to opposing offenses but over the last three games against illinois nebraska and northwestern Purdue is only allowing 71.8 rushing yards per game and have only allowed one rushing touchdown heading into this ball game over the last three games. When you look at Iowa overall, they're only rushing for 131 yards per game entering this ball game and only have two rushing touchdowns over the last four games. This is still a pedestrian offense. Iowa's only averaging 200 passing yards through the air. They're giving up 157 rushing yards to opposing offense and 213 through the air. I think the up-tempo of Purdue will force Iowa's defense to get worn out. I think they push Iowa to the limit at home. I think Iowa wins, but I think it's a very close ball game. I think Iowa wins a three-point game in this ball game. I think boy, the Purdue Boilermakers match up very well against the Hawkeyes in this matchup. I'm taking the points with Purdue. All right, Boilermakers plus nine, which you can get at Bet Online right now. 
And one one last game, Joe. We got a, actually a 12 noon kickoff. Uh, the Texas Longhorns in the Big 12 versus West Virginia. It looks like West Virginia minus three in the hook, 55 the total. Finish us off with this one, Joe. Yeah, I mean, the last two games, West Virginia's won two straight by 11 points per game. They picked up this matchup last year in Austin, 24 to 20. But I think Texas is fighting to become bowl eligible. They're sitting at five and five. And I like the way their defense matches up against Will Greer and West Virginia's offense entering this ball game. You look at Texas on the offensive side of the ball, they're still rushing for around 135 yards on the ground, passing for right around 273 yards through the air. Shane Bouchel played well last week. He completed 22 of 32 passes, 249 yards, one touchdown, one interception. But it is all about Texas's defense. They're holding opposing offenses to 115 rushing yards on the ground, giving up 252 yards through the air. But I think that they could force West Virginia into becoming one-dimensional in this ballgame. Texas does have 25 total sacks heading into this ballgame and has created turnovers, entered this ballgame at plus five in turnover margin. And the most important statistic is that they're holding opposing offenses to 27% on third down conversions. When you look at West Virginia from an offensive perspective, over the, you could break down West Virginia's offense this way. In the first four games of 2017, West Virginia averaged 231 rushing yards per game. Over the last six games, West Virginia is only averaging 115.6 rushing yards on the ground. I think that favors Texas's defense in this matchup. And when you look at West Virginia's defense entering this ball game, they're giving up 191 rushing yards on the ground. I think Texas can get healthy here. They're fighting to become bowl eligible and the most important factor is West Virginia does have Oklahoma on deck are they peaking ahead in that ball game that could be a factor as well I'll take the three and a half points I look for Texas to get the outright victory 35 to 31 over West Virginia in Morgantown all right Joe so you got two favorites three underdogs we got Texas plus three in the hook Baylor plus nine and a half and Purdue plus nine, the three dogs, and the two favorites, Notre Dame minus 17 and a half, and Oklahoma State minus 20 and a half. So those are the five plays for Joe Lisi this week. Follow him on Twitter, at go for the 2 Joe, anything else before we shut it down? Nah, just looking forward to a great weekend of college football, Drew. This is what it's all about. Rooting for chaos for sure, Joe. And Joe is coming off of a bounce back week at one, three and one last week. But he's sitting at 31, 17, and 1 on the year. Hats off to you, Joe. Great job against the spread. That's a really impressive record. So we'll be back next week. Best of luck, man. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to our channel. Now we've put a lot of work into producing all these free videos, so please help us out and keep all our content free for you forever by simply liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Now not to mention a visit to our industry leading website will warm the hearts of all our SBR employees, especially myself. Now the links are over there to the left, uh, so do check those out. Thanks for watching.